I guess if, if I had to capture what we do in a phrase, I'd say, those of us who work in this in the field in terms of coming up with new compounds, we're hunter designers. Uh, and and um, that characterizes kind of two approaches to how you, how you come up with new uh, chemotherapeutic approaches. The hunter part is you may have an idea uh, of a new uh, entity that could solve a problem based on reading the literature, some analogy, a compound that's there, or uh, the um, shape of a pocket that's found in a, an interesting protein that regulates, let's say, cancer or other disease. And so the hunter part is uh, you go into large databases of uh, chemical structures and you sift through those uh, databases relative to some target, uh, this, this structure you've seen before, or this pocket, until you find a fit. And then you examine that fit, and then you do some chemistry around that, followed by some biology. That's the hunter part. And, on a, and industry uses that technique we do here at Emory. Uh, about, if I had to give some st statistics, about 3% of the time you find some complementary uh, hits uh, uh, or uh, complementarity between target and small molecule. And uh, then uh, if you do some uh, laboratory work around that to develop related compounds, with a little bit of luck and a lot of hard work, you can come up with um, some novel and interesting leads that could lead to animal studies into the clinic. That's the hunter part. Uh, the the uh, designer part is you know something about a molecule already. An example in our work uh, has to do with a, a really blockbuster anti-cancer drug which you know about or you've heard about perhaps it's called Taxol or Paclitaxel. It's a, a natural product which is discovered in the, as a component of the yew tree back in the uh, uh, late 70s early 80s and it took about 15 years until lots of detective work around what's its structure and what's its biology ultimately led it to the clinic but it solved some very serious problems namely uh, ovarian uh, uh, and breast cancer, f uh, vicious forms of those which couldn't be treated other ways and this compound could deal with that. So uh, that compound, for example, is solves these problems, but it has some serious deficits. Namely, it's, um, it's very toxic, so if you take too much, uh, you get sick. Uh, it also, after a while, your body develops resistance, so it doesn't work anymore. And so uh, we've been working with the three-dimensional shape of the taxon molecule for maybe 10 years. And uh, we wanted to understand, we wanted to do two things. One, understand how this molecule actually talks to the protein. What's the complementarity between this complex natural product and its target uh, protein called tubulin that exists in everybody's cells and regulates cell division? And um, so one aspect of our work was in fact to design a three-dimensional picture of this interaction which we then used to design new molecules. So we took that three-dimensional picture, looked carefully at the arrangement of atoms in the molecule and decided that if we built a bridge between point A and point B in the molecule we could come up with uh, much better drugs. And this was all done using uh, computer graphics, uh, 3D modeling, uh, colored pictures on the, on the screen that dance when you rotate the dial and stuff like that. And, um, uh, and we persuaded a couple of, a chemical group at the University of uh, West Virginia to, uh, to synthesize these molecules. They did that and they've turned out to be uh, uh, a new class that, uh, that uh, have properties which are, are superior to Taxol. And this was based entirely on computer-based molecular modeling and the three-dimensional shape of the molecule.